So let's talk about microscopy. Um, since pneumocystis organisms uh, do not grow in culture, and um, since we have seen that they present with very non-specific clinical feature features, then uh, microscopy is a low-cost gold standard for making our diagnosis of uh, pneumocystis pneumonia. Um, and what is required for um, microscopy is the ability to visualize the pneumocystis cysts or trophozytes. And this can be done either using immunofluorescence um, with monoclonal antibodies or conventional microscopy using stains on histological specimens. Uh, now the stains used are many and varied and we will look at um, how they compare in a, in a moment. And what can be used um, is perpendicular stains, um, gomorimethanamine, silver stains that um, have the ability to stain the cyst walls, uh, toloidin blue, um, right gemsa, which visualizes the trophozytes and um, intracystic um, nuclei, and there are also calcoflower white stains that can be used. These are all different stains that can be used to stain either the trophozytes or the cysts on um, specimens. Now molecular methods can also be used and this is mainly the PCR and PCR analysis of DNA that has been extracted from respiratory specimens um, has also been used. This has higher sensitivity than microscopy especially when upper airway specimens um, like nasal pharyngeal aspirates are used. Now, if you compare the um, several diagnostic tests um, and you look at, are you, are you targeting the cysts? Are you targeting the trophic forms? Um, and um, you also compare which is sensitive and which is more specific. Then you realize that uh, real-time PCR immunofluorescence and GM sustains have higher um, sensitivity and specificity as compared to GEMSA or the diff quick tests. Um, the only uh, the other thing you realize is that um, the tests with the with the higher sensitivity and specificity also tend to take a little more time in uh, procedure as compared to the tests with lower sensitivity and um, specificity. Um, for example, the GEM sustains. Now, what specimens can we use um, to make a diagnosis of pneumocystis pneumonia? Bronchoscopy with bronchial uh, alveolar lavage is actually the diagnostic procedure of choice. Of course, we understand that this has limitations because it will mean one, you, you should have a pediatric bronchoscope um, and uh, probably have an expert being able to do that. Um, and the good news is that any respiratory tract sample, including tissue biopsy, can actually be used. Now, if you would compare the lower respiratory tract um, samples, and this is induced sputum and bronchoalveolar lavage, those have way better yield than upper respiratory tract samples, and those would be the nasal pharyngeal um, aspirates. Um, induced sputum specimens, of course that has a bit of challenges in children, especially who are less than two years old, um, though there are now studies coming out, um, especially in um, sub-Saharan Africa, um, where induced sputum has been successfully done for the diagnosis of TB. Um, and so as probably as one takes induced sputum for making a diagnosis of TB, if a patient has HIV and they're thinking of pneumocystis pneumonia, then the same specimen can be submitted for microscopy, uh, looking for pneumocystis uh, gyroveshi cysts or trophozoids. Now, there are reports of nasogastric washouts um, having been used successfully as well. So um, what you're really saying is that all respiratory tract samples can be used for making a diagnosis, but some might be superior to others. Um, so let's compare, uh, this pyramid compares uh, the various samples that we've talked about and at the top of the pyramid is a gold standard that's bronchoscopy with bronchial alveolar lavage uh, but this requires intubation. Um, then second would be induced sputum where a patient would be nebulized with 3% saline and there are challenges with the children who are less than 2 years old but of course it can be done. 
and um, at the bottom of the pyramid would be the upper respiratory tract specimens um, where um, nasal pharyngeal aspirates uh, yields um, have been used for all the types of microscopy but the yield is increased when PCR is used. Um, and we have to remember that lung tissue biopsies um, either um, um, before or either at postpartum or um, in a patient can be used as well and stained to um, look for the pneumocystis organisms. Now this image shows conventional microscopy uh, looking uh, using silver stains and we can be able to see the alveoli space um, right there that is what is looking white um, or um, yellowish on your screen um, and then you can visualize the cysts uh, the round um, um, the round circular organisms um, all around the alveoli space would be the pneumocystis pneumonia cysts. Um, this is a tissue biopsy, so this is a lung tissue that has been um, stained with HNE um, and also the methanamine silver and you can see the cysts appearing black um, all over the lung tissue biopsy, especially in the left upper quadrant um, coming towards the uh, middle of the slide. Um, when you stain with GEMSA, um, then the stains, um, the, then the cysts look dark blue. Um, you can see the, um, with the arrows they are shown, um, the, um, the cysts taking a darker um, a blue stain as compared to the rest of the background. Um, now immunofluorescence uh, shown here on microscopy, then what you have is um, um, the green is the background and you can also be able to see the organisms here looking uh, black and round on your screen. Um, this is another slide as well on um, immunofluorescence microscopy and you can see the cysts as shown on the arrow. Um, now, are there any serum markers that might be able to help us in the diagnosis of pneumocystis pneumonia? Um, two, two, we will talk about two of the serum markers today, and one is a, a serum lact a lactate dehydrogenase. Now, an elevated um, LDH is a marker of tissue damage, and it will be elevated in pneumocystis pneumonia, and sometimes it can be elevated in other lower respiratory tract infections. Um, when compared, um, the elevation in pneumocystis pneumonia is way higher than the elevation in tuberculosis and bacterial pneumonia. Um, in adults, in several studies, um, um, an elevated uh, lactate dehydrogenase of above 220 international units per liter has been found in about 90% of adults with uh, PCP. The sensitivity for this test is about 78 to 100%, but it has very poor specificity. So what does this mean? This probably means that if you have a patient who you're suspecting um, pneumocystis pneumonia, and you do a serum lactate dehydrogenase and it is um, high, um, then it could mean they have pneumocystis pneumonia, it could mean they have bacterial pneumonia, it could mean this is tuberculosis. However, if you have a low, um, if you have a normal level of serum lactate dehydrogenase, then you're very unlikely to have um, pneumocystis pneumonia. So this would be a nice ruling out test as opposed to a ruling in test. Um, now, the beta-1,3 uh, D-glucan test is a cell component of uh, most fungi and there is now data um, coming out to show that it can be used for PCP diagnosis in uh, pediatric patients. It could also be positive with uh, many other fungal infections, so we have to be um, careful when we are interpreting this test. 